When I was a kid, I wanted to learn martial arts, as many other people. Being a Hungarian kid during the communist dictatorship in Romania wasn't always a Disney dream. We had, let's say, some difficulties there. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to learn martial arts in the first place, to defend myself. The other reason was because it was cool and mystical. I wanted to become a ninja. It was hell of a dream of mine and not easy to make it real, since there were no ninjas around to learn from. As we say in Hungarian, if there is no horse, a donkey will also do. No disrespect here, but in this case, the donkey was judo. At that time, only two Asian martial arts were available, judo and karate. Why did I choose judo over karate, which was much closer to what the ninjas do? Simply, I didn't like karate for some reason, so I chose judo. It quickly turned out that it wasn't my donkey. I struggled roughly two years with it, just to not give it up so quickly, but finally it was inevitable to quit. Next time I started to practice martial arts again, it was 13 years later and I never became a ninja. But today I'm here being one of the direct disciples of Grandmaster Ichi Keung, gatekeeper of Tung Kong Choga Tung Long Kung Fu. Long name I know, as long as my road was to get here. I wish I knew what I know now. I want to help you to find your way easier than I did. In my time, there was not enough information, and today is too much information available, so it's very hard to decide. You can easily get lost and spend a lot of time at the wrong place, spend your money and precious time, which is honestly not good. So, how to choose? Before starting to practice anything, you have to ask yourself a few very important questions and look inside you and really answer them honestly. Question number one. Do you really think it seriously? Do you really want to practice Kung Fu or martial art or just want to have some fun? Because it will define how you will approach this whole searching journey. If you just want to have some fun, then go and visit a few places. Basically, it doesn't matter what martial art is about. And if you feel good there, just stay there and practice. That's all. But if you really want to practice martial arts, then you have to dig a little bit deeper so the next question comes. Question number two. Combat sports or traditional martial art? To turn this into a more mundane question, let's put it in this way. Do you want to have much quicker fighting skills and experience or you are looking for a long-term development? In the first case, you have to look for a place when they are really focusing on fighting where the first goal, the most important goal, is to uh, be able to do some harm as quick as possible. Even in this case, there are many options for you. So if you prefer using your hands, then look for boxing or MMA. If you prefer ground fighting, submission, wrestling, grappling, then the best choice is to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That is actually one of my favorites, what I would do if I would not practice Choga Tong Long. They have great teachers all over the world. We have a lot of, they have a lot of fighting experience, so one of the best choices you can make. Or either you can go also for MMA or for traditional grappling. If you prefer to use your legs, then <clears throat> any sports karate, Thai boxing, MMA, Taekwondo will do. If you want everything together, kind of military stuff as well, which uh, is really focusing on, on combat, then you go for Krav Maga or again you go for MMA, which is a joint joker in this case. However, if you want a more traditional approach and you're looking for long-term uh, development, then the situation is a bit more complex, so uh, you have much more options and you have to be really, really careful in this case. Martial arts are, in general, more complex and more complete and they are focusing on many other respects, not just on the fighting or the combat, like health. That's why the way of development in the martial arts world is longer to achieve the same goals as the combat sports. Here we have Chinese martial arts, like Tai Chi, Shaolin Kung Fu, Hakka systems, the list is endless, basically. 
Then you have Filipino martial arts like Kali and Eskrima. Japanese martial arts like Aikido, Gojo Ryu and the different karate, traditional karate systems. Indian martial arts like Kalari Payatu or Siramban. Southeast Asian martial arts like Muay Thai or Kabi Kabong or Penjak Silat. Of course this list is far from complete because there are a lot of martial arts. I just try to list you the most well-known systems what you can find out there. In this case, there's really a big question how to decide. This is, you know, a deep, deep rabbit hole you can go down into and you can really get lost. We cannot really go into details, but uh, instead let's talk a little bit on a higher level. The, maybe the best approach is to uh, look at your goals in the first place. So the question is, what are you looking for really? So you want health benefits, in this case, you go and learn Tai Chi or Qi Kung. If you are looking for fighting skills, then you should look for Southeast Asian martial arts or Hakka Kung Fu or traditional karate styles. If your preference is to learn weapons, then almost any of these um, are uh, teaching the use of weapons. Probably the most practical approach uh, regarding uh, weapons, and when I say weapons I mean mostly knife and uh, sticks fighting, is uh, in Kali, Eskrima and most probably Pentax Silat. So if you're looking for that one, these systems are the best to go. If you want acrobatic skills, then go for Wushu, Shaoi Wushu. If you want fancy stuff, fancy moves, which uh, look good on any video or any movies, then you definitely should look for Shaoi Wushu or the Northern styles of Kung Fu. If you want to dive into the mystical, philosophical aspect of martial arts, then the best is to go for the Chinese or Indian martial arts. One of the best filters as an approach could be your physical abilities as well. So, for instance, how flexible are you? If you are not that flexible, uh, but you want to become flexible, maybe not super flexible, then do not go for Shaolin Wushu on the Northern styles because they are more focusing on this acrobatic aspect. If you have any physical disabilities, uh, in this case it really depends on what issues you have. So first of all, the best is to shorten your list and then go visit your doctor and discuss it with him, which one is the best fit to you. By now, you are, let's say, quite clear on the way you want to go and you have a short list of systems. Uh, there will be uh, one important determining factor, however, here which is whether the systems on your list are nearby you, so are they accessible. So let's assume that they are. Question number three. How is the community, the teachers, the masters? This aspect is also very important because it will uh, determine uh, your development, your way of development. So the best thing is that take your list, sit down to your computer and start to google up these systems uh, nearby you and find the schools. As you found them, just get in contact with them, call them by a phone, write them an email and ask a few questions. So which are the most important questions you should ask first? Who is the master and who is the master or teacher of the master of the school? Do they have any connection to a headquarter or to the lead master or any gatekeeper grandmaster of the system? How many times they meet their headmaster and how many times they train with him? These questions and the answers, of course, will give you a quite good picture about uh, how they are basically working, how isolated are they or how, what kind of connection they have to the, to the center, to the source of the knowledge, is how often they go meet each other, train or have an exchange in the knowledge. If they have no connection, or they have some connection but they don't really go to events where they can meet together and they can practice together with the top students or the handmaster, that's generally it's not a good sign. Soon I will make a more detailed video about how to identify a traditional martial art, but here we don't go into details, so check back later and see when this video will be out. So in such case, if you see that they don't have a connection to the root, to the source of information that I would remove it from the shortlist. As a second step, usually every school gives kind of an opportunity to try the trainings, to have a free uh, training session 
or to join really a, a group of people and uh, try out what the system is about and how they teach. So definitely grab this opportunity, go to the school and join a class like this. So what you should look for when you're there and doing this training in this community? How the teaching goes, what the structure of the training, how it built up. Is there any kind of concept which is followed during the training? This is really important. Is the instructor or the instructor supportive? Is the instructor knowledgeable? Do you feel mutual respect between the teachers and the students? Is the mood constructive, supportive, friendly? Trust your feelings, this is really important. If you see any sign of bullying during your uh, training session, uh, or overseen by teachers or even worse, supported by the teachers, then leave immediately and never go back. Such places do not really deserve your attention, time and money. Making challenges during the training and bullying, these are two different things. So you have to be careful and watch it really if there is the case of bullying during the session. Graduality in development is also a very important thing. Which means that if you go down somewhere to watch the uh, lessons or the training, or you join the training, if you see that the students, the beginners, are introduced gradually, step by step, into the different levels of the system, that's okay. But if you see that the beginners should do the same thing as the advanced, hundreds of push-ups, press-ups, they have to fight with the, with the advanced level students and basically beaten up by no reason, that's a, not a good sign, so watch that carefully as well. Of course, there will be things which will become obvious to you only after you spend some time in that school. But as a first picture, if you go through this, what I just told you, uh, you will have a quite good uh, image of what is happening in this school and what this system is about. And the last question, so what is the best for you? So, you're at the end of your list, you visited all the schools, but you still have some options left, how you decide. Actually, this is really up to you. If you feel well in a place, you think that the system fits to your physical abilities, uh, your needs, and uh, you feel that the teachers are good, they have a good connection uh, with the students and with the headmaster or in the headquarter, and you feel really well in that community, just join the school, put your energy in, follow your teachers, your instructors, train with them as frequently you are able to. After a while you will feel anyway if this goes anywhere or not. And then you can decide if you stay or you're looking for something else. I hope this helped you a little bit and uh, more videos will come out soon in similar topics. So thank you for watching and keep practicing.